Praise the Lord. Give honor to the Lord this morning, who is indeed the head of my life. I thank God for His Son, Jesus Christ, my Savior. I want to thank and praise the Lord this morning for allowing us to be in this place one more time. I thank God for this beautiful Sunday morning. I give honor to our Bishop, our founding and presiding Bishop, Dr. White, this morning. I give honor to our district superintendent, Elder Walter Jones. I want to give honor to you in the house of God, amen, and those that are unable to attend in person. In this morning's Christian education, we're going to focus on, um, on the teachings that we've been teaching on, but I want to kind of incorporate a little bit more into the teaching, <clears throat> excuse me, as I do somewhat of a review. And this morning, the teaching has um, has has a little bit more context to it um, from a personal element, and that is um, titled by title this morning, uh, "More Than You Can Bear." And I want you to be encouraged this morning that uh, the Lord won't put more on you than you can bear. <clears throat> and we have some examples in the Word of God that. Um, that show us, and our number one example is Jesus Christ, that the Lord did not, the Lord God did not put more on him than he could bear. And we've been learning in the book of Nehemiah about Nehemiah and how he helped pick up the work where the others had left off from building the wall and putting up the gates. Um, a lot of times people think when they read the book of Nehemiah that Nehemiah started the work, but Nehemiah actually did not start the work. He just actually was the one who picked up where others had left off building. And so that's very important because, you know, when I think about those that were building and, you know, we can turn over to the book of Nehemiah. And again, our lesson is going to follow uh, the context of more than you can bear. And so we can turn over to the book of Nehemiah, but, um, those that had stopped building had begun to feel as if it was too much for them to accomplish. I'll say that again. Those that had stopped building had felt that it was too much for them to accomplish. And whatever it is that God has placed within um, you to do for him, even if it's something as simple and as complex as serving him, I want you to be encouraged that it's not more than you can bear. In other words, it's not more than what you can do with the help of God, i.e. with the help of his spirit, with the help of his son, Jesus Christ, whoever lives to make intercession for you. And many a times, as I'm, as I'm finding my way over to the book of Nehemiah, uh, many a times when we begin to feel, as the psalmist says, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Um, for thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, the psalmist says. And so when we begin to look at things being more than we can bear, we must ask ourselves, whose standard are we measuring this by? And when I look over in the book of Nehemiah, uh, Nehemiah had the mindset over in chapter 1, as, as I'm there at this moment. He had the mindset that when he heard the news in chapter 1, and this for many of you is going to be review, uh, but I'm going to go back to it and read a couple of the scriptures just so uh, for those that have not had an opportunity to read or review this or hear this, it will be um, fresh meat and fresh manner for you. And over Nehemiah in chapter 1 and beginning in verse 1, the words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah, and it came to pass in the month of Chislu in the 20th year as I was in Shushan in the palace. And what came to me as I was reading the scripture is, for those of you who have heard this, um, the blessing in this for you is that if you listen and receive it into your spirit as if it was the first time that you've heard this, then the blessing that God gave you last time when you heard it is not the same blessing he's going to give you this time when you hear it. Amen. And so you will receive another blessing. Somebody say another blessing. You will receive another blessing 
by receiving the word that you may have heard before. Because the Spirit is always moving, the Holy Spirit is, but on the same word of God, but he always moves in the way that is needed in the present. Amen. So the Holy Ghost moves in the present according to the needs of the people at the time that the word of God is given. Amen. So it could be the same scripture, but, somebody say but, but as the spirit moves, he's moving according to the needs in the present. So the blessing that you receive from the word of God, that same word of God, may not be the same blessing that you received the last time when you heard that same word of God. Because it's not about the word being the same, because it is the same. The Bible, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, but so is the word of God. But the blessing doesn't have to be the same. God can use his spirit to move in different ways, to bless you in different ways, according to the same word. Amen. So I want you to be encouraged if you've heard this before. And for those that have not, amen, there's a blessing for you today in addition to those that have heard. So, the words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah, and it came to pass in the month of Chislu, in the 20th year, as I was in the Shushan, in Shushan the palace. So, Nehemiah gives you um, a location as to where he was, the year he was there, <clears throat> and he was at the palace. Then he leads into saying that Hananiah, one of his brethren, came, and he and certain men of Judah. So, Hananiah didn't come alone. He came with some people with him. Um, and he said, I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity. And so Nehemiah knew the state of his people. And he talked about those that were left of the captivity and concerning Jerusalem, because he knew that there were some people who had escaped. Amen. You know, you in your own natural environment, um, you may have escaped a lot of different things that the enemy was will not allow you to focus on how you have escaped them. I'll say that again. You may have escaped a lot of things in your environment, in your life. You've escaped death if you're able to listen to this message this morning. Amen. You have been redeemed from the hands of the enemy if you have allowed the spirit to come in and do that for you. And if you have not, then what needs to take place is that you call on the name of the Lord Jesus and that you say to the Lord that you yield and that you repent from all of your sins known and unknown and that you ask the Lord to wash you in the blood of Jesus Christ. The Lord God will wash you in the blood of Jesus Christ. And this is all spiritual. Amen. And he'll wash you in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and make you brand new according to 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. And so you say, well, Sister Pastor, what does that all have to do with this? It'll come clear in just a few moments. Amen. And so... There was a, a group of people that were left from the captivity, and they had escaped. And when you receive the Lord Jesus Christ, you have escaped. Amen. And so they said unto me in verse 3, Nehemiah 1 and 3, The remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burned with fire talking about more than you can bear this morning. And so Nehemiah received this news of the people that he was inquiring about, his people. You know, ne Nehemiah was sitting nice and happy in the palace in Shushan. And so he wasn't in the day-to-day -day flux of, you know, what was going on where they were. But it didn't necessarily mean that because he wasn't down there in the trenches with them that he was not concerned. And I want you to be encouraged as I'm, as I'm going forth in this lesson this morning. Just because someone is not there physically with you down in the trenches, down in the throes with you, where you are right now in your life, does not mean that they're not concerned. Because Nehemiah had a heart of compassion, even sitting way up in the palace, for those that have esca had escaped the captivity. And the enemy will come in and try to make you feel that it's more than you can bear to, um, because there's no one else around you that's able to really feel physically what you're going through. But just because Nehemiah wasn't physically there didn't mean that he didn't have a heart or a burden 
within himself for the people that were going through. And that tells me that someone doesn't necessarily have to be where you are to feel for you where you are and to pray for you where you are. And what the enemy will do is try to make you feel as if you're all alone, that you're isolated. There's nobody else who can understand this. There's nobody else who's been through this. Nobody else can go through this. This is more than you can bear. This is more than anybody else can bear. But must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? There's a song that says, no, there's a cross for everyone. There's a cross for you and there's a cross for me. And so Nehemiah wanted to understand what was going on with the people. He shared that burden for those people because he know he knew rather that God was able to do more than what they thought they could bear, regardless of what they were going through. And he didn't inquire just for the sake of inquiry. You know, sometimes people will ask about your situation or ask about this or ask about that for the sake of inquiry, inquiry's sake. But then there's other people, there are others that inquire about how you're doing because they have a reason, a pointed reason behind it. And we'll go on and we'll speak more to that. And verse 4, and it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept. So Nehemiah did not just inquire because he wanted to know how they were doing. When somebody reaches out to you to see how you're doing, one of the things that comes to mind sometimes is, why do they want to know? Why are they asking? What is it that they want to know? Is it something they want from me? Do they just want to talk about me? Or really, are they concerned about me? So on and so forth. When God places people in your life that inquire about you, when God, I said when God, Amen. places people in your life that inquire about you, they should have your best interest at heart. Not to be nosy, not to be in your business, but to be a person who's an advocate for you in prayer. Amen? Amen. And it's not about the physical things that they can do for you. Not about those things. Although it's nice if somebody can help you, God bless them. But everybody not able. But it's about the spiritual things that they can do for you. Because everybody needs somebody to pray for them. I'm going to say that again. Y'all excuse me, having a little nasal issue here, but everybody needs somebody to pray for them. And so if God brings somebody in your life, don't just think it's just by happenstance or a strange thing. It could be the Lord is bringing them in your life at a, such a time as this, because you may feel that what you're going through is more than you can bear. And so God will bring a prayer warrior into your life. Nehemiah was a prayer warrior, and we're going to see how much so. And it came to pass, and for, and for I'm, re, I'm circling back, when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. And I like how they preface this here because, you know, they were very specific in letting us know and identifying who Nehemiah was praying to. There's a reason for that. It's not just a matter of you um, going here to church or going there or doing this, that, and the other. But at the end of the day and at the beginning of the day, it's important to know who you serve and then why you're serving them. Many a times we get caught up in going to church and the, and, and the, the, the routine of the matter. But we have to step back at times to look at the fact that it's important to know who I serve and then why I'm serving him. Because if I don't know who I'm serving, and I'm talking about specifically God the Father, separate person. Jesus Christ the Son, separate person. The Holy Ghost, third person of the Trinity. They are not all the same, but they are individual people, individuals of the Godhead bodily. And if I don't know who I am serving, and why I am serving, then why am I serving? Amen? And so they were very pointed in pointing this out or laying this out before us that Nehemiah took these steps into getting where he needed to be 
in God so that the present situation would not be more than he could bear. And it came to pass, he heard the words, and I know I'm kind of dwelling in this spot as, as the Spirit is leading, but I'm dwelling here because the Spirit wants us to get something out of this. And I encourage you to really hone in on who we serve and why we serve because that helps us to understand that what we're going through is not more than what we can bear. Amen? When we take our eyes off of who we serve, when we, are, we don't have a clear picture that we serve in God the Father, Jesus Christ his Son, and the Holy Ghost comes in to help us to serve them, then it causes us to feel that anything that comes our way that's more than that is more than we can bear. Amen. It could be something simple, but when we don't have a clear picture again of who we serve and why we're serving, the smallest thing that comes our way could be the tipping point, could be the breaking point as to us feeling that this thing, this next thing that comes our way is more than we can bear. So I want to encourage you this morning. Nehemiah took steps. He heard the words that came his way. You know, when situations come your way, you have to take a moment and just take it in. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Because everything also that comes in don't go all the way out. And so you have to take a moment to take it in. And when I say take it in, you can take it in to a certain degree. Because it may not be something that you need to really internalize and even pray about or take to God or anybody. But in this particular instance with Nehemiah, it was something he needed to take to the Lord. Sometimes there's things that come about, you don't even need to take those to God because it's something that you may not even need to be involved with or deal with in the first place. So we have to assess when things come our way, do I really need to be involved in that? Lord, what do you think? Do I need to be involved in that? And in this particular instance, Nehemiah was moved by compassion and by the Spirit overall, the Holy Spirit, to let him know that, yes, you need to go down and weep and mourn and fast and pray before the God of heaven. Everything is not worthy of this process. I'm going to say that again. Everything that comes into our lives is not worthy of the process that took place in 1 and 4 in the book of Nehemiah. And as we grow in God, he will show us those things that are worthy of this process. What happens a lot of times is we take on things so much so that we begin to feel it's more than we can bear because we didn't step back to assess if those different things that came at us and came into our lives were really even worthy for us to take on to do what Nehemiah did in chapter 1 and 4. And therefore, we cause ourselves to be overwhelmed and forget that the God of heaven is who we're serving, and then we forget why we're serving. It's about the who, and it's about the why. Amen? Who we're serving and why we're serving. And then he'll show us what, meaning what to do while we're serving, which is what Nehemiah did in chapter 4, 1, one and 4. That was the what. Amen? And so in verse 5 it says, and, he, and said I beseech thee. So after Nehemiah had done all this assessment, now I gave you a whole lot of background there because Nehemiah went through all this process before he got to chapter 1 and 5. And so a lot of times we take everything, everything to God in prayer. Just take this, take that, take this. Some things are not worthy to go before the throne. Because, and you might say, well, you know, the Bible says in, in prayer, uh, you, you take everything to the Lord in prayer and, you know, with prayer and supplication and, you know, all things, praying always and on and on and on. But did the Lord want you to take that specific thing? And that's why it's so important we've been talking about, and I won't interject this too much at this moment in time and into and, and, and this particular lesson, but um, we've been talking about walking in the Spirit, following after the Spirit, following after charity and all these different things. 
And as you are filled with the Spirit, and you receive more and more of the Holy Spirit, He will show you what you need to bring to the Lord in prayer. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So it, it may not be a thing where you can go deep and do all these other things. And so just to add some clarity to it, it's not that God doesn't care about everything. Mm -hmm. But some things, the Spirit says you're stronger than that. Or he'll <coughs> Excuse me. expose the enemy. Uh -huh. He'll just let you know it's something not to be concerned about. Mm -hmm. uh, because you serve the Lord and you serve God and they have maybe taken care of that already. Mm -hmm. And the enemy may just be trying to make us feel sad, down, depressed. <coughs> Excuse me. Have to Yes. So that's why that some things are, are not worthy to be taken to prayer because we're following the Spirit. He'll say, no, that's just Satan. Yes. He'll, he'll, he'll say, no, the Lord's taking care of that. Mm -hmm. And he'll tell you to use your prayer time for something else, someone else, or another situation. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so the enemy will try to sometimes confuse you as to what to take before the Lord in prayer. And the Spirit of the Lord is so important to walk after the Spirit and walk in the Spirit and, and I overall have the Holy Spirit. And that's why if we don't have him, we need him. We have to ask the Lord, Lord, give us the Holy Spirit after we've repented of all of our sins. Next steps, next words, next prayer out of my mouth needs to be, Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit so I know what to bring before you and what not to. Because sometimes the enemy will bring things your way just as a distraction. And those things don't need to be prayed about. They just need to be rebuked. And you can rebuke him and those things in the name of Jesus. And you will know when and what to rebuke and why you're rebuking it. And in other times, in this situation with Nehemiah, the Spirit of the Lord led him to say, you know what, I need to go and sit down and ponder this. I need to go sit down and I need to, I heard these words, let me see what I need to do with these words. And then he began to go through his process as the Spirit led him and he needed to pray. And he need, it was revealed to him he needed to pray. He needed to weep. He needed to fast. He needed to mourn before the God of heaven. He knew he, who he needed to take it to. Amen? Amen. So, he need, so the Spirit of the Lord will help you know what to take to the Lord and when to take it to the Lord. And even why you should take it to the Lord. And most importantly, how to take it to the Lord. Because sometimes we don't even know how to take things to the Lord. We just feel so overwhelmed, and it, we just feel it's just so much more than we can bear. We don't even know how. But that's why it's important to have the Holy Spirit and ask him for the Holy Spirit if you don't have him. Once you have repented of all of your sins, because he will show you the who, the what, the when, the where, the how, the why. He'll give you the whole picture. Amen. And five, it says, and said, I beseech thee, O Lord. So now Nehemiah goes into his prayer. The great and terrible God that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. Let thine ear now be attentive and thine eyes open that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant. You know, when you come before God, there's a way. Amen. I'll say that again. When you come before God, there is a way. And there's a way the Bible talks about that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof is destruction. Well, there's a way to come to God in prayer. Nehemiah began to acknowledge even more who God was and is. And so he came to him very carefully in these verses. He asked God to let his ears be attentive and his eyes to be open. Asking that he might, might, mayest, which is might. Because God don't have to hear our prayer. She said that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant. Nehemiah also said a key word there. He said thy servant. So not only did he identify who God was at that moment in his, in his life, but he realized his relationship to God. That's very important. I started earlier talking about how we need to know who we're going before. Amen? And why we're going before. Who we're serving and why. Nehemiah realized that God was the great and terrible God. And that God, he also realized God's works. Because he said, keep his covenant and mercy 
for them that love him. And he realized there was a condition that God would keep covenant and mercy for those that love him and observe his commandments. So Nehemiah realized that God was not obligated to move in his behalf unless he loved God and kept God's commandments. A lot of times we want the Lord to bless us on credit. And God is a good God and he has done that and he continues to do that for a lot of us. And he just blesses us on credit and he hadn't asked, you know, for payment and he hadn't charged us no interest. And, you know, he hadn't gone to the bank to withdraw nothing or anything like that. But then it comes a point in our walk in the Lord that he expects to receive some type of payments. And I've talked about this in this vein before. It's just a simple analogy for me. But, and those that have heard it, just bear along with me if you would. Be long-suffering with me today if you could. But it's only fair that after a while that God would require something from us. And God is not only asking for something of us uh, or from us um, to bless him, but really and truly what he asks of us is to bless us. He's such a good God. He wants us to really realize that there's nothing that comes our way that's more than we can bear. And he turns around and he turns things around when we love him and keep his commandments and he gives us more of his spirit when we ask him in order for us to be able to do what it is that he wants us to do. Everything that God requires of us is for us. I'm going to say that again. Everything that God requires of us is for us. And many a times we got it so wrong. If, if the people would just realize that. If the people would just, if we would all just gravitate toward that and if we would really dig our heels in to receive that, that everything that God is asking of us is for us, the churches would be full. The live streams would be full. Amen. The, 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 the YouTube watching of the YouTube would be full. But so many times people feel that, you know, it's more than I can bear to go to church. It's more than I can bear to read my Bible. It's more than I can bear to get down on my knees and pray. It's more than I can bear to repent and to ask God to forgive me of all of my sins, known and unknown. It's more than I can bear to expect God to keep me living free from sin. It's more than I can bear to think the thought of every day when I get up in the morning that my life is supposed to be hid in Christ and that I'm supposed to walk after his commandments and I'm supposed to love him with all my heart, my mind, my body, and my soul and that I'm supposed to live my life 100% holy, W-H-O-L-L-Y and H-O-L-Y for God. But everything, I want to encourage you, it's not more than you can bear. Everything God asks of us, some of y'all don't like this. The Spirit just says some of y'all don't like the word require. I'm okay with that. I'll use ask. That's, he said that that's a more softer and approachable word. It all means the same thing. But everything that God asks of us, beseeches us to do, would like for us to do, even suggests for us to do. Everything he asks of us, is for us and not for him. He's the most high God. He's the God that's the only God. He is the potentate, holy and, 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 and ever liveth God. And everything he asks of us, he never asks of us anything that's not going to bless us. It's all for us. And you know, the enemy has blinded the minds a lot of the times for us to not understand that. That is not for God. We're not doing anything for God that God is not trying to do to bless us. And at the end of the day, in the beginning of the day, whatsoever you do for God, in some form or fashion, he's going to turn around and bless you. Amen? Amen. It's all for you. It's not for him. He just wants to see that if you do it for him, can he bless you? 
can he trust you to give you the blessing? Amen. So Nehemiah said, let thine ear now be attentive in six, one and six. Thine eyes open that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee now. Nehemiah said, look, God, I'm, com I'm coming right now. I'm, I'm coming before you right now. He says, and day and night for the children of Israel, thy service. Again, he has identified a group of people as well as himself as servants of the most high God. When you come to God and ask him to do anything, you must know what your relationship is with God. Amen. For instance, if you know that you are a sinner, meaning you have not repented of your sins, known and unknown, you have not said, Lord, I, I, I have sinned against you. I'm a sinner. I need you to, to wash me and to cleanse me and to purge me of all of my sins, known and unknown, and give me the strength by the power of the Holy Spirit so that I will live no longer in sin. Take away my sins and the power of sin that caused me to live in sin. Take it all away, Lord. Apply your blood of your son, Jesus. Apply his blood. Because he died on the cross and raised up. And then he sits on the right hand of the father right now. And he's living to make intercession for me. So that I might be able to live free from the sin that he died and raised for me to not live in anymore. I'm a servant now after I've done all of that. And ask the spirit of the Lord to come in and come in and just dwell within my spirit. So Nehemiah knew that they were servants of the most high God. But he knew that at a certain point in time, somebody got off. And he said that he prayed now before the for God day and night for the children of Israel thy servants and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which he said, we have sinned against thee. He, he lumped himself into the group. He was like, look, we, we were servants, but we messed up. We were servants of you, the most high God, but we, we sinned. And then he turned around and he said, both I and my father's house have sinned. When it comes to your relationship of, with God, know where you stand. I'm encouraging you this morning. It's not more than you can bear. Own where you are in your walk in God. I'm going to say that again. Own where you are in your walk in God. If you know you have sinned against the God of heaven, and you know you need Jesus to apply his blood to your life one more time. Don't allow the enemy to cause you to feel it's more than you can bear to go and ask God to take away all your sins, known and unknown, and apply the blood of his son Jesus to your life one more time. Why? The Spirit just said to me, the blood still works. The blood still works. Contrary to popular belief, the blood still works. And when you feel the blood doesn't work, that means the enemy has come in and tried to overwhelm you to make you feel that anything and everything that you have done is more than you can bear, and therefore it's more than what Jesus can bear. But Jesus is able to bear it. He's able to take it. He's able to bury it. He's able to cause your sins to be as far as the east is from the west. And somebody needs to know that this morning because... The enemy, for some reason, is causing somebody to feel so overwhelmed that they can't bear this any longer. But you can bear it with the help of the Holy Spirit. You can bear it once you allow yourself to understand where you are in your relationship with God. Maybe you don't have a relationship with him at all. Start from square one and repent according to Psalms 51. And David prayed a prayer in Psalms 51, and he knew that he had had a relationship with God. But he had severed that relationship as far as walking in the fullness of what God wanted him to be. For three years, David was not walking according to the will of God. David was a sinner. He had, he had really, really bottomed out as far as being in right standing with God. Did God still know who he was? Yes, he did. God set him on the throne. God had predestinated David to be the king. It didn't change God's mind about who God called him to be because God had already made it so where he was going to be king. It has not changed God's mind about who you're supposed to be in him either. 
Predestination is predestination. It's up to us what we do with it. I'm going to say it again. Predestination is predestination, but it's up to us as to what we do with what God has predestined us to do. You can either accept what the Lord has called you to do. Nehemiah knew when he went to the Lord in prayer, he was like, look, I'm a servant. Let me, let me stop playing around here. Nehemiah was like, I'm a servant. Let me and these people that I'm asking about, we all servants of God. That, that's who he called us to be. But as servants, we have messed up and we have sinned. And we have, need, we have a need to identify that in order for God to put us back in right fellowship with him. And, 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 and grace unto Nehemiah because he did not allow the enemy to come in and make him feel it was more than he could bear to go and repent, not only for himself, but for the people of God that were fellow servants. The enemy will, if you're not careful, he'll make you feel it's even more than you can bear to repent. Some of y'all have done things that you feel is just so much more than you can take on that if you went to God, that it would just be, you don't, you, you feel like you might get struck by lightning or something. Or you may feel as if God just, he would just turn his back on you. But the spirit of the Lord is telling me to tell you, he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. We have to understand that we leave God and our actions cause us to move away from him. He's still in the same place he was when we went to him in the first place. He has not changed his position. He has not moved his feet. He has not moved his seat. He's still where he is in heaven. Yes, sir. Excuse me. Amen. I like that. You cannot bring anything before God in prayer that he doesn't already know. Because Nehemiah said, he said, your eyes, let your eyes and let your ears. Nehemiah knew God had eyes. He knew God had ears, which means that he already see where you are and where you've been and what you've been doing. He's not slumbering. He does not sleep. So since he doesn't slumber or sleep, the Bible says that the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. And, and then the Lord also, it says the eyes of the Lord go to and fro throughout the earth. So he already see everything anyway. So when the enemy comes in and makes you feel it's more than you can bear to even come to the knowledge and come to the courage to repent to the Lord, and to identify the fact that you're either a sinner or you are a servant of God and that you lost your way in God, then the enemy comes in and makes you just feel, it's just too much. I can't do this. I'm, 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 I'm overwhelmed. It's more than I can bear. But that's a lie from the pit of hell. It's the devil. I'm going to call him out. It's the D-E-V-I-L. Better known as Satan. And he comes to discourage you. From co to cause you not to get your right place in God. He will make it so you will actually forget if you were ever in God, who you were in God. Me and I said, no, we're servants. So he came to himself. No, we servants. Me and the other servants. We No, we servants. I know who we are. Now help us to get it right and get our right place back so that we can do what you called us to do. Because I want to walk in my predest predestination. And it's not more than I can bear. It's not more than what I can do. Why? Because I know who I serve. And I know why I'm serving him. And I know what I'm supposed to be doing while I'm serving him. I know the who. I know the why. And I know the what. And then it's a matter of next. Once you do all of that foundational work. It's a matter of when. Amen. Amen. I'm going to continue on. Verse 7, he says, We have dealt very corruptly against thee and have not kept thy commandments, nor the statutes, nor the judgments, which thou commandest thy servant Moses. So he knew the history. 
of the people that he was with and who he was a part of. He knew that they were all servants, even back into Moses' time. So he knew the word. He knew the way. He just needed to know how. How to get back in his place in God. And for those of you who don't feel as if you ever had a place in God, your question is, Lord, how do I have a place in you? And the answer to that is repent. Be ye converted. And that's over in Acts 3 and 19, and I'll turn there in a few if the Spirit allows. But he says here they, they dealt very corruptly against the Lord, the commandments they didn't keep. They didn't keep the statutes. They didn't keep the judgments. And he said, you told Moses to do this, so I know you told us to do it. He said in verse 8, remember I beseech thee the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses, saying, if ye transgress. Now he went deep then. He went and said what he was told or what Moses was told. So he quoted the scripture to God. Some of y'all know scriptures. Some of y'all know how to quote scriptures. So now you just need to know how to get your place back in God. It's not more than you can bear. You can do this. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. It's not more than you can bear. You can serve God. The enemy wants you to feel like your life outside of God has been better than a life in God. But it's quite the contrary. Because Jesus said, that I am come, and this is St. John 10, I am come that I might give life and that more abundantly. But he talks about the devil too. He says that the enemy came to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But he said, but I have come that you might have life and that more abundantly. So there's a deception going on when the enemy makes you feel as if you it's more than you can bear. Because Jesus didn't say that it was more than you can bear. Who's talking to you then? Who's feeding you this information? Amen? So, verse 8, if ye transgress, this is Nehemiah still talking, this man is still talking to God. Some of y'all, the enemy tried to shut you up and shut you down. But Nehemiah kept pressing his way in prayer. I want to encourage you. Keep pressing your way in prayer because if you keep pressing your way in prayer, you will get a, not only a breakthrough, but for those who need to repent, you will receive salvation. And then the breakthrough will come through the salvation that you receive. And the spirit of the Lord will come in. I, I'm going to encourage you to try it out. Some of y'all haven't repented. But you need to repent because the Bible says in Isaiah that he will wait for you, that he is gracious unto you. Amen. He will wait for you, the Bible says, that he may be gracious unto you. He waiting on a lot of y'all so he can be gracious. You might have thought you repented. You might have thought you let it go. You might have thought, oh, I hadn't done such and such in a while. I hadn't said this in a while. I hadn't cussed in a while. I hadn't drank in a while. I hadn't bear false witness in a while or lied in a while. I hadn't done this and that and on and on and on. But if the spirit of the Lord hadn't come in yet, if we have not allowed him to, we're doing it in our own will. But you want the spirit. Somebody say, I want the spirit. I want the spirit to come in and lead me and guide me with his power. So that way, as I'm walking and talking and doing on a daily basis, I'm not walking in my own confidence. Because after a while, that becomes more than you can bear too. Because as soon as you disappoint somebody, then you go from here to here. But when you're walking in the confidence of the Lord, you can go from strength to strength. Psalms 84. We, that was our opening scripture. It said that, we go from strength to strength. Amen? Strength to strength. I'm going to turn there real quick as I hold my place here. As we're drawing down this, this morning's Christian education. But uh, Psalms 84. Amen? Psalms 84. Let me get there myself. I just want to read that scripture. For those who are feeling as if it's more than you can bear. But the Bible gives you backup. Amen. It says, 
I'm going to start in 84 and 2. My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. Many of y'all, your soul is longing and fainting for the courts of the Lord. And when your soul is longing and fainting for the courts of the Lord, that's another way of saying, I feel like my life right now is more than I can bear. Amen. Amen. It says here, my heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. What he's saying, David is saying, my soul feels as if right now, somebody said right now, Amen. my life is more than I can bear. He said, three, yea, the sparrow found in house and the swallow a nest for herself. In other words, everybody else seemed like they're doing fine. Everybody else seemed like they're doing real good. He says, where she may lay her young, even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my king and my God. But then David says, blessed are they that dwell in thy house. David understood that these that he's looking at, guess what? They must be in the house of God. They must be in the plan of God. They must be in the will of God. He says, blessed are they that dwell in the house, in thy house. They will be still praising thee. In other words, they in the house of God and they praising you. They're just being still, just praising you. In other words, they are right. They praising you. They're content. They praising you. He says, but five, 84 and five Psalms, blessed is the man or woman whose strength is in thee. Sound like somebody that's not overwhelmed. Sounds like somebody who don't feel that this thing or whatever it is they're going through or just life in general is not more than they can bear. It says, in whose heart are the ways of them who passing through the valley of the of the valley of Baca, make it a well. In other words, somebody sound like they praying and crying. The rain also filleth the pools. Sounds like the tears are filling the pools because someone feels as if they can call on the true and the living God when their heart is overwhelmed. And verse 7 is where I wanted to go. It says, they go from strength to strength. Why? Because they're crying out to the true and the living God. They are still praising him. They're dwelling in the house of the Lord. I want to encourage you. It says they go from strength to strength, every one of them. If you do the things that you have been uh, a recipient of this morning, every one of you will go from strength to strength. Every one of you. It says every one of them in Zion appears before God. Why are they appearing before God? On their knees, they're appearing before God. How are they going from strength to strength? Because they're appearing before God. When you appear before God, you will go from strength to strength. If you allow him to come in by his spirit. If you have repented, according to Acts 3 and 19, I also want to encourage you there for a few moments. Acts 3 and 19, as we're, as we're ramping things down. Acts 3 and 19 is a scripture. Actually, I want to go to 2 and 38, and then I'll go to 3 and 19. Excuse me, Acts 2 and 38, it says... Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of, the, of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. I want to encourage you. <clears throat> it's not about water baptism, even though that's good. And we encourage you to be baptized in water. But the first baptism, somebody say the first baptism, first baptism. should be in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Once you have repented, and be baptized, we're talking about being baptized or being filled with the Holy Spirit. Asking the Lord to send in his Holy Spirit into your human spirit. After you have repented, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall, somebody say ye shall. Ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off. Maybe you feel afar off this morning. I want to encourage you. The Bible says that the word is nigh thee, even in thine mouth. In other words, in your mouth, you have the power to cause your relationship with God to be established or reestablished. It's all up to you. It's up to us this morning. How close do we want to be to God? 
or how far away do we want to remain? It's a choice. It's not more than you can bear. It's not. God has given us what we need to give him what he wants. I say that quite often, but it is true. He has given us, it says here in 38 and 2 and 38 in the book of Acts, Peter said to them, repent. I say to you this morning, repent and be baptized in the spirit. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, you can get baptized in water later on. And I encourage you to do so because it's an outward showing of an inward measure of grace. It is an outward showing when you get baptized in the water of an inward measure of grace that the Lord has afforded you. Because at that point, you're, you're showing openly to the world that I have repented. I have, I have laid aside every weight and sin that does so easily beset me, as it says in Hebrews. I have realized that this is not more than I can bear. That God has this life for me. I can live this. I can do this through Christ Jesus. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Amen? In the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This particular piece here can happen on your knees. Water baptism can happen in the presence of the people. But this right here, the foundation in 38, Acts 2 and 38, that's between you and God. Amen. Acts 2 and 38 is between you and God. This is where you start. Amen? Everything else comes after. 3 and 19. It says in 3 and 19, it says, Repent ye. He's talking again. Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. I want to encourage you this morning as we're drawing things to a close. And I know that Nehemiah over in one, I'm flipping back there. In verse nine, he says, but if you turn to me and keep my commandments, Nehemiah one and nine, he's still talking about what Moses said. Even way back then, Moses knew his relationship with God. And Nehemiah was quoting Moses, was quoting this word because Nehemiah knew repentance even way back then. Peter was just telling the people what he had learned from Moses' time. Nehemiah was telling God what he knew from Moses' time. I'm going to tell you, repentance is not a new thing. Repentance has been around a long time. And it still works. And it works along with the blood. I want you to be encouraged. But if you turn unto me, verse 9, Nehemiah 1 and 9, and keep my commandments and do them. I'm not talking about the Ten Commandments. I'm talking about being led by the Spirit. Part of that is a part of that, but it's not all of that. We got an Old and a New Testament. You will find your way in the will of God by reading the Word of God. You will find your way in the will of God by reading the word of God, word of God, because your the Lord's will for you is in his word. Amen. And he says, though there were of you cast out unto the uttermost part of heaven, yet will I gather them or gather you from thence. In other words, he's saying, wherever you are to this morning, as I'm closing, wherever you are, nothing's too big or too small for you to ask God. Wherever you are, he said, you might be cast out to the uttermost part of heaven. Some of you may be uh, all by yourself somewhere. All by yourself or you feel like you're surrounded by people you can't talk to. But you can talk to the Lord. And he is waiting on you. And it says here, to the uttermost part of the heaven, yet will I gather them from thence. Wherever you are, he said, he's going to gather you. He's going to scoop you up. And he's going to hold you in the hollow of his hand. And he's going to lift you up. And when the time is right, you're going to be able to go forth in him. But let him do his perfect work in you. The Bible says, in your patience possess ye your soul. Be patient with God to change and turn your life and your mind around. So when the time is right, you can do as Nehemiah did. You can go out and lift up the people by going out and helping them pick up the work where they left off. God has a plan for you to help and to build. 
But he first has to lift you up and help you and build you up so that you may be strong and that you may no longer feel that it's more than you can bear to do what God has been telling you he wants you to do. I will gather them from thence and will bring them unto the place. God has a place that he's bringing you to, if you allow. That I have chosen to set my name there. These are the servants, thy people, whom thou hast redeemed by thy great power and by thy strong hand. O Lord, as I close, I beseech thee, let now thine ear be attentive to the prayer of thy servant and to the prayer of thy servants. Nehemiah wasn't just going for himself. He said, look, it, it, I'm, I'm here. I know who I am and you are who I'm supposed to be. But these people also, they're servants too. Don't forget about them. Don't forget about me and don't forget about them. And he says, who desire to fear thy name. You have to desire to fear the name of the Lord. It, repentance begins with the fear of the Lord. Repentance. The fear of the Lord, the Bible says, is the beginning of wisdom. You must desire to fear the name of the Lord. If you don't desire to fear the name of the Lord, it's hard to repent. Amen. It says here, who desire to fear the, thy name and prosper. So now after you are desiring to fear the name of the Lord, you can ask the Lord to prosper you because you need to prosper in order to do his will. And I pray thee, thy servant, again, he identified who he was in relationship to God. You have to do that. You want God to know who you are. That's okay. He ended this prayer the same way he started it off. He was consistent, amen, in his ask of God. And he says, and grant him mercy in the sight of this man. You need mercy. You need more mercy this morning. You need to ask God. For I was the king's cupbearer. You know, Nehemiah was simply saying, who he was in his secular vocation. In other words, what his daily job was. He like, look, I'm just, I'm just a cupbearer of the king, but I am a servant of the most high king. Amen? Amen. God bless you this morning. That's all I have for you. I'm going to turn it over to the pastor for, for closing Christian education remarks. Amen? I thank God for Christian education. Man. I thank God for the sincerity of the word this morning and how God truly does care about us and how no matter how far away we think we are in God, if you know that you've been called and you know that you've been chosen and the Lord has revealed it to you at some point in your life, he's either told you directly, maybe you were already doing the work or he sent somebody that's told you that the Lord has chosen you, that he's trying to call you out of darkness. I thank God this morning that Christian education told us that it's not more than we can bear to come to the Lord and repent and to come to ask God to forgive us and to come to ask him to try us again and to renew us and strengthen us. And as Sister Pastor Harris pointed out this morning, that it's the devil, that it's Satan that tells us it's too much. Oh, well, I don't want to bring this to the Lord. Oh, I've done so much and I've been gone so long. But God already knows that. He already sees. He, he saw when we were in the act of doing whatever it was. And so it's not that we're going to tell God anything that's going to embarrass us. But rather he is truly waiting for us to come and to repent and be filled with the spirit that he would be gracious unto us. And it was a sincere Christian education this morning. And sometimes you need a sincere word. And the Bible says that the truth will set you free. And the truth this morning is that all of us, somebody say all of us, all of us have to come to the Lord one day and repent and ask him to forgive us and to fill us with his spirit. And I'm encouraged this morning that when we went over and asked, I opened, I turned to ask and a bookmark fell out. And it's a program that says, Nehemiah says, let us rise up and build. You may not be able to see this on the camera. And at first I was like, oh, this must, this must have been a recent meeting because this is what we've been talking about recently. But the date on this is October 4 through 6, 2019. October 4 through 6, 2019. And when Assistant Pastor Harris started out, 
she said, if you look at this as if it's the first time you heard it, she said, some of y'all, you've, you've heard Nehemiah before, you've read this before, but if you look at it the right way, and you open your heart and you allow the Spirit to come in, the blessing you would receive today is not the same is the blessing that you received last time. The blessing we received today, if you were there October 2019, is not the same that we received in 2019. And so be encouraged that what the Lord has for you today is for you today. And today he has for somebody to come back unto him to receive a blessing, to receive salvation, to receive a new start. Amen. I ask that you would stand as we close our Christian education. And Nehemiah had compassion on the people. And God has given us a heart of compassion. That even though you may not be the one that's in that situation anymore, because the Bible said, as such were some of us. So we were the person at one time that was afar off, that was thinking it may have been too much, because Satan was telling us, well, I can't come back to God. We were the ones, it's taking a little time as you get your Christian education offering together, it was me one day that was riding by on the bike or walking on the street, seeing people in church saying, oh, I can't go in there. I've done too much. I can't, I can't sit in those seats. God's going to strike me down. But he already knew. And such were some of us. But today, he has called all of us unto repentance. And so let's look unto the Lord this morning as we close Christian education.